Okay, so in this video, we're looking at describing graphs, straight line graphs, that is, using two numbers. We're looking at using the gradient, which we use the symbol M, and the y-intercept, which we use the symbol C. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw four different graphs and see how changing the value of gradient affects those graphs. And in doing so, we're going to pick up some really useful um, Excel skills. So to start off with, you need to create a uh, Google Sheet that looks like this and let, make sure we've got the right spacings in between them and make sure we've got the right gradients of y-intercepts. So that's your starting point. Uh, so why don't you pause the video and do that first and then once you've done that, we can resume. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've paused the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves four sets of data. So I'm going to do ID... ID, so this is just stands for independent and dependent variable. So we're going to essentially do this for each of our gradients and y intercepts. So on this one, we're going to do really nice values of the independent variable. We're going to do go up in one. So we're going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we could just write all those numbers in, but there's a quicker way of doing it. So if I hover over the cell and I press equals, and then I click on this cell above it, so that's, uh, you can see is B6, and then go plus one, then I hit enter. You can see it's calculated that for me, and if I click on this box and drag it down, I can get it to do all the values for me without me having to do anything, which is quite nice. And we're going to do the same thing for all of the I's, but again, there's a shortcut for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one copy B6 the whole time, and then click on this, drag it down that way. So I do equals, again, I, we're gonna make it copy this one. So equals B6, and again, drag it all the way down, equals B6, again, drag it all the way down. So basically, these cells over here will copy whatever you put in here. So let's say if I change this one to 12, you can see all of these ones will now update. And remember, these ones are all just one bigger than this one. Uh, so let's fix that back to where it was, um, and this was uh, equals that one plus one. Okay, so that's why we might want that kind of automation. It allows things to update. So now what we're going to do is calculate our D values, our dependent variable, based on the gradient and the y-intercept. So what we have to do is put equals in here. So now we're going to click the gradient. We're going to do a star, which is a, for me is above the eight, so I think for most people above the eight. Then we'd click on B6, and then we're going to go plus C3, like this. So that what this is doing is it will take the value in I6, it will multiply it by this value in C2, and then add on to it this value of C3. Now, we want to use this value of M and C for all our data. So the C value, I'm going to put dollar signs, like you see here, around the C. B6, I want to change every time, so I'm not going to do anything. And then C3, I'm going to put dollar signs because I want that to stay the same for all of them. Then I'm going to click enter. So here you can see the formula I've typed in. The one without dollar signs is B6, which is this cell here. So now, if I click and drag this down, you see all of these in them have C2, which is our gradient. The value here has changed, so this one is using B11, this one is using B9, and then the value of C stayed the same. So the dollar signs mean when I apply this formula to other cells, this bit doesn't change. And what we're going to do is the same thing for each of our sets of data. So we're going to do that one times by that one plus that one. But what we're going to do is, again, we're going to put the dollar signs in it so the F2 doesn't change each time. Ooh, put it in the wrong place there. And we don't want the F3 to change this time either, but we do want the E6 to change to E7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. We'll do that just two more times. Uh, so we're just going to do that one times by, oh, I don't want to multiply it by that one. What am I doing? I want to multiply it by this one. And then again, I want to add on that number there. So this, what, this bit's a little bit fiddly. We need to put dollar signs around the I. So you can see they go in before the number. So they go wrapped around the I. So you can do dollar I, dollar three, essentially. And then we can apply that down. 
one final one. I'm going to do this gradient times this value of i plus this one. And again, we want L2 to stay the same and we want L3 to stay the same. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll show you what happens if we don't have these dollar signs in. I, I think that might be useful to help you understand that. So let's actually get rid of these dollar signs. And I'll show you what happens if you don't put them in. Uh, first of all, we can see carnage. Because you can see what's happened here is instead of staying as L2, which we want for all of them, you can see this has been going up as well. So this one was good because it did L2 times K6 plus L3. But this one did L3 times k7 plus l4 so it's essentially moved down so that's why we have the dollar signs because we want all of our data to be multiplied by l2 and then we want to have l3 added on to that one so we just put the dollar signs and then that should clean up all of those errors there so now what we're going to do is actually plot graphs to see what these look like uh, so let's bunch in our data a little bit uh, this will make it easier to fit our graph in. So let's squish all of that up. Someone let me grab that one. There we go. Okay, so that should be enough space. So what we're going to do is we go to insert. We're going to insert a chart. And you can see to start with, it takes a guess of what you might want. First of all, we don't want a line chart. We want a scatter chart. So let's do that. And then it's guessed what data you want. So let's delete that. So now we haven't got any uh, data on our graph. So we should need to stay in the setup. So we need to add our first set of data. So let's highlight that. So there's our data. So it's now got K5 to L16. So we've got these ones. So on the x-axis i want to so if we click on this window here we can actually select the range we want to be on our x-axis so we want all of these values of b you see i've got some uh, k's in here okay okay i'm going to restart that because i clicked something wrong earlier so let's restart that whole process otherwise i'm just going to be confusing you so insert chart let's go back and uh, we want to insert a scatter chart okay so let's if you click on it we can get it back so let's select where our data is so to get rid of that so if you want to select data you need to click this one select data range so then our data is all in here so let's do that one um then we go okay and then we want to tell it what's actually on our x-axis. So uh, we go to here, we go to x-axis, go here, go to select data. Let's tell it what we want. We want i to go on our x-axis. And you can see it is now plotted our data. So if we now go to customize and to series, we can add a trend line and we can even get it to uh, label it with the equation so it'll tell us what our equation is and you'll notice that this number matches up with the number we put in here this number matches up the number in here so we've essentially by choosing these two values we've determined what the equation will be okay so let's close that now what we're going to do is look at adding a second set of data onto this graph so i just double click on my graph and it picks picks up this menu so what you we can do now is we can Add a series. So you can see here, go down to series, add series. Again, go to select our data, but this time we want our second set of dependent variables. So I'll highlight all of those, click OK, and then go again, go to customize because we want it to have a line of best fit. And let's label it with the equation. So you see our equation, the numbers now match up with this second set of data because we've got 4x plus 4 there. And we can see that's that one. So before it was 2x. So you can see we end up with what we call a shallower gradient or a smaller gradient. Whereas if we make this number bigger, we can make it like this. Let's uh, again add more data. So let's add another series. Select our data. But this time we want this one. And again, let's go to customize, series, trend line, 
and let's label it with the equation as well. So you can see that by making this number in here negative, and instead of having a line that goes upwards, I have a line that comes downwards. So this line that slopes down, we describe as being a negative gradient graph. See, because I put in m equals minus 4 instead of plus 4. But you can see all of these ones have the same value of c, which is why they all start at 0, 4. So let's add our final one on there. So double click on it, add series, our final set of data. And you can see we've got it there. We'll go to customize, go to series, trend line, use equation. And you can see our final set of data is now on here. So you can see that having a num minus two in there gives us a less steep line, or we give call it a smaller gradient, but it is still negative, which is why it slopes downwards here. So what we can see is we've managed to draw four lines that go on the same graph, and we've managed to get it to show us their equation using Google Sheets as well. And it gives us a chance to see what this number, the gradient, does to different graphs. And I'm just going to show you this. Uh, so if we change this value of C, so let's change it to like 10. You can see this graph now starts up at 10, or let's exaggerate, let's start it at 25. So you can see I've just shifted the graph up. If I put in minus 10, I've shifted the graph down. But whatever number this is dictates where the line starts at your y-axis. Uh, so let's set that back to 4 so it goes back the way it was. And again, if we want to see the effect of it, if we turn this one into 10, we can make it a really steep line. We can make it 1, so we can make it shallower. We can make it like 0.1, so it gets really flat at this stage. Um, but by changing this value of m and c, we can change where the graph is, and we can change how steep the line is.